Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah I'm your host Mohsin Shah and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Ma'ar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah MashaAllah Sheikh, have you been travelling anywhere? Have you been, you know, praying Qasr Salah? Inshallah yes. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we'll be here in London Sheikh, we discussed Qasr Salah, we were looking at the criteria We discussed how far one should travel we discuss where you measure it from, the, the border of the city. We discuss having the right intention. We also discussed uh, not changing that intention. Um, what is the next criteria of Qasr Salah? A'udhu billah, as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Allah. The fifth criteria is that the journey in which the one is taking is not for a prohibited and haram purpose. In other words, if the one intends to go for a haram journey, for example, uh, the one plans to go and steal from a specific, let's say he lives in Birmingham or Manchester or Scotland and he wants to come and steal in London a jewel shop for example, and leave that day. In this case, the salah of this person will be in full. He cannot pray uh, Qasr Salah because the intention of the trouble was for haram trouble. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the Sayyid mentions the example of, of a wife traveling without the permission of her husband. Okay. Again, that traveling is a ma'asi, is a sin that she's not taking the permission from the husband. Also, the son and the daughter, they travel despite the objection of their parents. Again, that is a ma'asya trouble, a disobedience trouble. In this case, they have to pray in full. There's no qasr. Although they're going to go just for two or three days, and the hukum of musafir is uh, for them, you know, they, they have the right if they were just normal travelers, they should have prayed in Qasr, wajib. But now because the whole trouble, the intention is about committing a sin or disobedience, in this case, the Salah will turn to be in full. So that's uh, one of the conditions that we have to make sure uh, to avoid, of course, because in including that is the Ma'asiyah and, and uh, um, Haram Act. We shouldn't displease our parents. We shouldn't you know, as a wife, just please uh, uh, the, the husband. And of course, the main thing is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to disobey him by going for a, uh, a journey to steal, for example, or gambling and so forth. MashaAllah, Hassan, there's like, you know, someone's being punished in a way that, oh, if you want to travel for these purposes, then obviously, you know, I'm not going to give you uh, you know, the, the mercy of having Qasr Salah uh, sent. Shaykhna, how does one actually recognize uh, his hometown or, you know, his, his, home, his house, his home city? I mean, a lot of people travel. Sometimes with ulama, they have to travel for a, a very, very long time. Sometimes they move for, you know, between um, one house to another house for, let's say, for example, someone from Iran has come to London and he's going to live here for a year. But when he travels around in the UK and so forth, that, that does it, is his Salah Qasr or not? Because he's not technically leaving his home. He left his home in Iran. Um, what happens in that situation? The one who makes the intention and chooses to stay in a place and consider it to be as his hometown, in this case, even if he was not born in that country, let's say he was born in Iraq or Iran or Pakistan or India, and now he wants to move to the UK or Canada or, or America, when he decides to stay in that country and live there, then that country becomes his hometown. 
and he can start praying full, fast, and so forth. Uh, so it's all up to the person's intention and choice that if I choose this place to be my hometown, Allah, you start uh, your life there, and you pray in full, and you fast uh, the month of Ramadan in this situation. Sheikhna, is it possible to have more than one hometown? Um, I know a lot of people go back and forth from, let's say, Hosea students. They're from London, they go to Qom, they live in Qom, they study in Qom, then they come back and go and back and forth. Is it possible to have two hometowns? Yes, if you consider um, two places, let's say your own hometown where you were born, and the place in which you go for study or work, uh, let's say you're six months in this city or in this country and six months in that country or city. In this case, you have now two hometowns. In this case, uh, you should pray in full in both places, uh, whether you stayed there for a day or for a month. Um, you're passing through that city to go somewhere else. Because it's the, it is your hometown, you must pray in full. You cannot pray Qasr. Um, unless, yes, if you decided to uh, abandon that second hometown, let's say you're in Hausa, now you leave that city of Hausa, and you, you, you go back to your first hometown, where you were born, for example. Yes. In this case, that place becomes uh, no longer your hometown, your second hometown. So whenever you come there for to stay two or three days, you pray Asr. And you have to break a fast because it's no longer your hometown. Yes, and mashallah, mashallah. Shaykhna, what about those who travel as pur uh, purpose of work? Um, pilots, uh, captains of ships, um, and you know they do like regular traveling. Let's say they have the same three flights a week they do. Um, for them, is it mandatory to do Qasr Salah? Those who travel often for business and work, they're known to be as kafir al-safar, often travelers. They have to, uh, because they travel often, let's say every week, uh, you know, passing this 44 kilometers of distance, then they have to pray in full. They cannot pray Qasr. Because that's uh, part of their life. Now they work and they travel. It's part of their life. So they cannot pray Qasr at all. They have to pray in full. If they go for the work and business, they pray f in full. If they go for holiday pleasure. and pleasure, then they have to break their uh, Salah and uh, pray Qasr in this situation. So it depends. Mm -hmm. oh, sent, I see. I see. Yeah. So it's all down to the near, really. Are you going for you know, business or you're going for pleasure exactly. and if it's business then obviously you pray in full if it's pleasure then you pray Qasr Sheikh now you discuss one of the criteria is that the length of stay has to be within 10 days what if someone wants to stay longer than 10 days does he get to pray uh, Qasr Salah for 10 days and then go into full if you make the intention to stay 10 days in a place which is not your hometown then with the intention of staying 10 days, you have to start praying in full. Anything below 10 days, you have to uh, make the Salah Qasr and pray to shorten the Salah in this case. So it depends really uh, on the intention. I mean, even if you stay there for two weeks, for three weeks, and you did not make the intention of staying at least 10 days, you still have to have to pray uh, the three weeks in Qasr and break your fast as well unless you make the intention so that's the core that I make the intention to stay in a place for 10 days at least onwards without this intention I cannot pray in full and I cannot fast mm. I have to break the fast and, and shorten the Salah and pray Qasr so the main thing is to make sure that if you want to uh, pray full and uh, fast, you must make the intention of staying 10 days. What if one makes the intention for 10 days and then changes his intention? For example, I, I intended to go to uh, Paris 
for two weeks, 14 days. And something emergency happened and I have to come back. Uh, I'm, I've, I've been in Paris for two days now, praying for Salah. And now I know that, oh, I'm going back home in four days. There's an emergency or something. I need to get back home quicker. So what happens in that case? Do I need to redo my Salah? Uh, and what about the remaining days? Because you made the intention of staying 10 days and you prayed, let's say, in full, uh, the six days passed. Now, the next four days in which you, want, you don't want to stay in that place and you want to break it and travel, in this case, you stay, you remain praying in full until you leave that city. Okay. So you, you do whatever you did before by praying in full until you leave the next day or the day after. So you don't f switch to Qasr. You cannot oh, switch to Qasr. Okay. Because you already made the intention of praying in full. Mm -hmm. uh, so you continue the Salah as they were, and then you leave the place and uh, continue your journey. Ahsan, <laughs> Shaykhna. Shaykhna, what happens when I have the niyyah to stay for, let's say, nine days, and then I decide to extend my stay for another nine days so i've stayed now for a total of 18 days in the city um do i have to start praying full prayers now or do i still pray qasr because the intention wasn't there to to stay for more than nine days well if somebody is, is uncertain about his stay and it happens a lot um, that am i going to stay in this place for two weeks three weeks Less than a week, I don't know. In this case, um, if that continued and that individual um, prayed the Qasr because he didn't make the intention of staying 10 days at least, because that's the, the intention must be made. If you want to pray in full and fast, you must make the intention. Otherwise, you keep praying uh, Qasr and breaking your fast. However, the maximum limit for the one to be able to um, perform the Qasr Salah is 30 days. So you extend the days a week after and then another 12 days or 15 days till the 30th day. When the 31st day is there, you start to pray in full. Because the maximum you can pray Qasr is 30 days. You cannot extend it anymore. So on the 31st day of your stay in that place, in that particular city or country, um, you stop praying Qasr. Now you turn and switch to praying full. So that's the rule about it. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, what about those who travel between multiple cities, multiple distances, over 30 days. So I'm continuously traveling. I'm on tour, as they say. I'm going to do four days here, four days there, five days here, 10 days there, six days here, and so forth. Let's, let's keep it to nine days. So nine days here, nine days there, nine days there. And it's been 30 days. I'm, I'm going to be touring for 40, 50 days. Um, does that same rule apply? That for 30 days I pray Qasr? And by then I do my full salah. The maximum 30 days condition that if you stayed in one place, so let's say you stayed in Najaf only for the whole 30 days, um, and you didn't make the intention of staying there for uh, uh, the iqam to stay there at least 10 days, and you prayed all your time qasr, the 31st day, as I mentioned, you start praying full. That is only for the, the one who stays in one place. Okay. Not the multiple places as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But if you decide to stay nine days in Najaf, seven days in Karbala, uh, eight days in Mashhad, I don't know, uh, five days in Qum, in those holy cities, and that will make up about 45, 50 days, let's say, of your journey. In this case, you stay... Uh, praying Qasr. Mm -hmm. The hukum of the 30 days is only for those who want to stay in one place uh, 30 days. Otherwise, you keep praying Qasr by moving from one place to another. 
So nine days here, Asr, seven days there. Even if it's up to, let's say, 50 days, that's fine. As long as there are multiple cities, you keep praying Asr. But one place you stay, up to 30 days, Asr, 31st day you start praying in full. MashaAllah, Shaykh. Thank you very much for today's discussion. And thank you for all the viewers for joining us wherever you are in the world. Inshallah, join us on the next episode of Hikam SOS. We'll be discussing further on Qadha prayers, Inshallah. Hoping you're not traveling too far. And if you are traveling, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you on your travels. Inshallah, see us on the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, uh, uh.